What's up, everybody? My name is Easton Hartzell, and you're listening to Learning Christ, a Finding Christ podcast. I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. Today's our first episode. And so before I um, maybe move into some more spiritual things, I kind of just want to explain to you the purpose and, and why I'm doing the stuff that I'm doing. While I was in my mission, I served in Northern California in the California Sa- Santa Rosa mission. My um, companion and I in my district, we created this awesome Facebook page. The Facebook page is called Finding Christ. You might have heard of it before. And the purpose of this page was to, to allow different missionaries around the world use it to, and, and to add to the content to be able to share it with friends and, and different members, people learning about the church and, and those who already have strong testimonies of the church. It was a hit. It grew so quickly. And throughout my whole mission, we were able to help literally thousands of millions of people um, who watched and, and viewed the content that, that we created or that we were able to share. Now, I got home from my mission in July of 2021, so it's been about a year and a half. And um, when I got home, coming home was the hardest thing in the world for me. I had such a hard time adjusting to home life and figuring out who I was and what it means to be a return missionary, all that type of stuff. As I started reaching out to friends and, and other return missionaries, I realized I wasn't the only one. I realized life gets super duper hard. As I've been home, I've been able to adjust, and and really, life is so much better now. I I'm I don't know. I'm just so happy. Right now, I'm studying at BYU, and and I'm working as a as a part time seminary teacher, and things are just so good. But as I've started to, as I've continued to talk to return missionaries, I've just realized it just never gets easier. And something that I've realized for for really everybody, not just return missionaries, not just the young adult population is that it's so hard sometimes to have a daily scripture study. Um, The church has its awesome Come Follow Me program, but just as in in a personal day-to-day life, sometimes it's so hard to get that in every single day. Now, there's so many different incredible podcasts that, that I listen to. I'm sure you've listened to many of them before that truly do help us grow our testimony. They often bring in these awesome scholars and professors who just are geniuses who can help us more fully understand the scriptures. This whole past year, as we studied the Old Testament, I listened to them constantly and I learned so much stuff from it. But one thing I've realized is that lots of these podcasts are pretty long. They they come out with maybe one or two a week and, and they can be anywhere from an hour to three hours. And I just don't think that the average person has that time. So what I've decided to do is to create this podcast. Um, It's going to be created by me and and by some of my friends who are also just young adults, return missionaries, maybe people who haven't quite served a mission yet, but who have strong testimonies. And our goal is to create shorter 10 to 15 minute bite-sized chunks that can help us grow our spiritual foundations. They're not going to be as focused on, on more of the historical and and educational side of things not so much the academic side of things but they'll be more on what spiritual doctrines can we learn here maybe we'll talk about some of the spiritual stories and experiences that we've had we'll talk about our conversion stories how we've come to learn and to know christ how we came to find jesus christ in our own personal lives so this upcoming year as we study the new testament i hope that you can join us regularly as we study and learn more about him, as we start to come to know and to learn Christ himself. Now, to get started, since this is our first episode and and since this is our our first time being here together, I kind of thought it might be fun to just share one of my favorite stories from the New Testament, just give you a little sneak peek of kind of what my goal is for, for this podcast. And to do that, we're actually going to be jumping a little bit far ahead, um, to actually a book of scripture that we're not going to be in until about halfway through this year. We're going to be talking about John chapter 21. Now, John chapter 21 is, in my opinion, one of the most powerful chapters in the entire New Testament. Here in John chapter 21, we're, we're looking at the disciples. We're not sure how long after Christ died, but we just know it was after Jesus Christ died. Basically, what happened was all of the disciples turned to Peter. Peter was the chief apostle. He was, he was, as Christ called, the rock upon which the foundation of the church was to be built. And all the disciples turn to Peter and they say, hey, Peter, what do we do? Christ is dead. He commissioned us to go and to preach his gospel. What do we do now? 
Peter looked at him. And he he was a little confused. He didn't know what to do anymore. He looked to them, basically said, you know what? It's been such a good time working with you guys. I've loved being a missionary with you guys. But he says in chapter 21, verse 3, I go a fishing. He didn't know what else to do anymore. So he just went back to his old ways. About three years before Christ had called him, told him, leave your boat, leave your oars, leave all of these fishing things. And come and be fishers of men. But now that Christ was gone, Peter didn't know what to do. So he he picked back up this old habit. And the disciples, they said unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. Just immediately after, they decided to go back and fish. And they fished all night. Now where they fished, which was the Sea of Tiberias, they would only fish at nighttime. Don't ask me why. I just know that they only fished at nighttime. But throughout the entire night, it says they caught nothing. Now, when it started becoming the early, early hours of the morning, they were getting probably pretty frustrated. They felt pretty lousy. They felt super discouraged. They hadn't caught anything all night. This had been their profession for years and years and years, and they couldn't do it anymore. But it says in verse 4, when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. So the, so the disciples looked to shore, and they saw this figure, and, and they saw this campfire going. And uh, they're like, who is that? But they couldn't tell it was Jesus, even though it was. And Jesus saith unto them, children, have you any meat? Have you caught anything? They answered him and said, no. And then uh, verse 6, it says, and he said unto them, cast the net, therefore, on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Now, I just want you to imagine this. You're doing your job, your career. You're doing something that you've done for years. You've been fishing for eight to 10 hours already. And this random guy who you don't recognize comes on the shore and he's like, hey, have you tried throwing it on the opposite side of the boat? Now, I can just imagine in my brain, at least one of them would have had been like, oh, my goodness gracious, what an idiot this guy is. Of course, we've cast it on the other side of the net. But I think maybe a bit of them being um, just desperate, them being sad and having such a bad day. I mean, they had just lost their best friend as well, and now they're not catching anything. They decided to do it. it says they cast their four, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. One of the miracles is that the net didn't break because there were so many fish. Well, immediately after this happened, they're all sitting there trying to grab all the fish, And John turns to Peter and he says, it is the Lord. Now it says in verse seven, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he cast himself into the sea. He basically was like, oh my goodness, you guys stay here. You can do what you want to do, but that's my Lord. That's my savior. He jumped in the ocean and Michael Phelps to all the way back to shore, immediately getting there and just ran up and gave our savior, Jesus Christ, a hug. He'd been dead for some time. He missed him. It was his best friend that he could see again. What would you do if you saw the Savior come to you? If you could go up and give him a hug, what would you say? What would you do? Well, Christ, knowing that they probably had a pretty rough evening, pretty rough night, he actually decided to make them a little bit of breakfast. It says they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid thereon and bread. And Jesus saith unto them, bring of the fish which ye have now caught. So they brought the net, they brought all the fish, and and Jesus said, come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask, who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord Jesus Christ. They all knew it was him. So he gave them the fish. He gave them the the bread. He gave them just this nice breakfast. And they just start talking. They start having this just friendly conversation. So there's this one moment where Christ kind of turns his his attention to Peter. Um, I know Peter looked at Christ as his best friend, and and Peter, or Christ turns to Peter and he says, Simon Peter, son of Joseph, Joseph, Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And Peter looked at him and he was like, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Obviously, I love you. And Jesus turned to him and says, feed my sheep. And then just right after, Jesus turns to Peter again. He says, Peter. Do you love me? And the second time, Peter kind of looks a little hesitantly, and he's like, 
Yea, Lord, of, of course I love you. You know me. I've done, I've left my entire life for you. I do love you. And once again, Jesus turns to Peter and he says, feed my sheep. Then he turned to him a third time. And he said, Peter, son of Jonas, do you love me? And it says in verse 17, Peter was grieved because he said unto him a third time, lovest thou me? He was like, Lord, I've told you once, I've told you twice. Why are you asking me a third time? He was getting a little grieved. He's getting a little frustrated. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said and turned to him, feed my sheep. Jesus basically looks at him and says, I've asked you once. I've asked you twice. I've asked you three times to leave your nets, leave your oars, leave all of these things and to feed my sheep. But you refuse. You have just gone back to these old ways. And he says, if you love me, then go and feed my sheep. And in that moment, Peter became the chief apostle that we all love and adore. In that moment, Peter became the person that that people literally would try and sit under his shadow to be healed by him because he had such strong faith, because he could work such strong miracles through Christ and through God in that one moment. So my friends, each and every day as, as you start to join us in the mornings or in the evenings, whenever you get 5, 10, 15 minutes to listen with us, I hope that you will allow that to be your 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 feed my sheep moment with the Lord. Allow these moments to change you. Now, if you have time, if you don't have time, try and study your scriptures. But at the very least, come with us every single day. We're going to highlight at least a verse or two where we where we can really come to know our Savior a little bit better. My friends, I love you. I love our Heavenly Father. I love Jesus Christ. I testify that He is our Savior. I testify that God is our loving Heavenly Father. And pray that as we get together, we can grow our testimonies together. Say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.